All right. Welcome to Nosy Joe's Motovlog. We're at MSXC round one for the 24-25 season here in row 15, senior C. On my 2003 DRZ 400E. Pretty good start mid pack here. There's nine guys in the class. Looks like I got about four of them, maybe five, out in front of me. Right directly in front of me is Mike McDonald. Uh, he ended up winning this race. He's on a, I think a 2019 KTM 300 XC. Open it up here with some speed and the kind of a fire road here. Right, right turn and then through the trees. The guys are getting bungled up already. Really dry conditions. I was surprised. Uh, we've been delayed a week due to rain, which is a super rare thing. Normally we would run no matter what, but if you guys recall last weekend was when that Hurricane Helene kind of came through and Kentucky got a lot of the wind and rain from that. It's actually all the way up into northern Indiana. So I kept my sights on Mike until I got stuck here behind this KTM. And that's probably the last time I see Mike. He, he starts uh, taking off and battling for the lead. Told me after the race, uh, he battled back and forth with Steve Gastineau a lot on his beta cross trainer. I don't think I ever see Steve the whole race after the beginning. Get around that KTM. I'm just going to show you my first lap. It's not necessarily my fastest lap. I haven't seen the lap times yet. Um, it's a fairly clean one, though. I don't really have too many issues. Okay. Just learning the course a little bit. Not as fast as I think probably some of my other ones were, where I was more in the zone, in the groove, once I knew what to expect. Yeah, a lot of guys having trouble with the trees, I think. They jump out and get you if you're not careful. This uh, turn here was easy to overshoot. But yeah, uh, super... I mean, there's just like three spots on the whole, whole course where you even see a touch of mud. And the course was a whole lot of this right here, where you go down a dip and then right up a hill. Um, those were the toughest features of the course. Some of them a lot steeper than others. There's probably about five of them. Uh, five of them, I'm guessing. Some of the downhills were pretty steep going and then you'd all of a sudden have to be right in hill climbing mode at the bottom. Not sure how well that'll come through on the camera, but some of them were pretty tough. nervous here because I haven't seen anybody in my class for a while. Kind of running my own race here. But eventually I'll get caught. 
that I put some on Compared to the course last year, the la last year's course had a lot more kind of flow and speed to it. I mean, we did have one little dip and hill climb that there was actually some kind of a pile up on. But it, my memory of last year's course was just a lot higher average speed. You just got a lot more flow and stuff. I don't know if that's because maybe we bikes ran Sunday and the four-wheelers had kind of widened up the course and smoothed it out for us, but um, this year bikes are Saturday, which I actually prefer. You have some true single track that way. A couple guys struggling there on the hill climb out of the dip like I'm talking about. Kind of slowed down to make sure that cleared up before I jumped in. Couple guys struggling there on the left. Another climb up out. But yeah, I, I guess in general uh, it seemed like this was a more technical course compared to last year's. But yeah, I thought it was kind of like appropriately difficult though. It wasn't like, you know, there were never pileups. And you know, that's not really, I've never tried to build a course. It's not really necessarily foreseeable sometimes where guys are going to struggle a lot. But um, yeah, I mean, there wasn't any place on this course where 20 bikes were on each other so that's a good sign basically kept it moving and I feel like we had a pretty good turnout between two trees uh, I think there was because of this delay and postponement there was some schedule conflict there's one of the mud spots with uh, IXCR and maybe Warren I think there's even a Stony Lonesome on Sunday, so a lot of guys were going to have to run a double header if they ran today. And there's a guy in my class passing me. I hope I don't get his name wrong. I think it's Matt Baker. I think he ended up in third place. I'm trying to keep up with him. I don't keep up with him very long. section through here. Not so bad on the first lap, but it started to get washed out a little bit later on. I will say the course changed a lot towards the end. Some things got tougher. So you guys watching my uh, more recent videos, I kind of talked a lot about anticipation of this first MSXC race. Um, I had some things I wanted to do to the bike before this race, which I did. Uh, mostly being switch over to these KKE wheels and some fresh rubber. I've been running the same tires really since I built this bike. 
And I know with this winter series, which it's hard to imagine this being a winter series when this was like 82 degrees, it felt like 85 degrees maybe. But that's just kind of how it is in early October. But anyway, we'll get into some mud and stuff normally later in the season. So I went with soft terrain truck tires, which I'm not really sure was the best choice in retrospect. M5B in the back, which it was fine. I mean, it's kind of like you can never go wrong with the M5B. Here's a little Honda XR or XL that pretty cool to see out there. Yeah, XL. But he is kind of in my way. But yeah, M5B was fine, I think. Um, you know, he doesn't care if it's a little dry. Uh, but I went with the BX30 front, which is a straight up sub train as opposed to this VX40 I have been running, which is an intermediate hard. And I'm not so sure about this VX30. Um, I had trouble kind of deciding where I needed to be pressure wise. The VX40 has a really soft carcass and you end up having to run about 14 pounds in it for it to kind of feel stable enough, but it really hooks up. And, and it hooks up in everything except when it gets really muddy, which is why I didn't go that way. Because I had trouble with it clogging up during some of the last year's winter races. Another little dip here. So I thought, I thought maybe the VX30 would be kind of the same tire, but just more spacing in the knob so it can clean out better. But it's got a, a stiffer carcass, and I you know, started out at 10 pounds and kind of rode it around the house a little bit, and then um, anyway, I landed on like 10 pounds. I started out at 12, if I didn't say that right. But I'm thinking this is probably more like an 8 pound tire. It just is so stiff. Or maybe it just needs to break in more. Um, I only like truly lost the front end once. Um, and it was kind of in a bouncy section that I'm sure my weighting was wrong. So I really can't, you know, it's not like I can say the tire just sucked or something like that. But, um, it just wasn't quite as confidence inspiring as that BX40. I should have left it on uh, for this dry race here. But maybe when I get into some true soft terrain, I'll be glad I have the BX30. But uh, for this, these conditions here, I would have been better off with the 40. descent because that was a steep one. Right into a hill climb again. M5B on the rear, that's a great all around tire. I went with the 130 size. I think the DRZ might be better off really with maybe like a 120 that tire. I was running the 110 on the BE33S which was pretty perfect. Somebody's buzzing me. There he goes. So I'm wanting to get caught back up with, there's a Kawasaki up there, KX450 I believe, he's in my class, I'm needing to pass him to get into fifth. I believe I'm running sixth right now.
him up there. I got someone behind me again now. Let him go by. Tyler Burge on the left. Alright, yeah, there's that Kawasaki. I just kind of took note because not very often in senior see the guys run a 450. So I thought it would be a good challenge to try to chase down that 450 on my DRZ. Some guy wants to get around me again. And there's Tyler again. On the KKE wheels, um, yes, yeah, the kit you can buy off at eBay it comes with a set of spacers. Everything there seemed to be pretty cool on the rear wheel. Um, I had bought the wrong rear rotor. Um, and I've happened to run over to Rocky Mountain in Winchester on Friday to get the right one. I had one that was the right. Suzuki bolt pattern, but the diameter was too big. It's probably like a RM250 or something. And I needed the 220 mil back one, and the Tusk makes one for like 40 bucks. So I ran down there and put that on there. Kind of as a result, I didn't really have much time to do test and tune on this new setup. On the front, um, kind of weird deal with uh, the spacers and the seals they give you, or at least in the kit that I got. They gave me two identical seals for left and right of the front, but the, uh, the side that would be like the speedometer side, which would be the right side, it takes a different a smaller seal um, so I ended up using a seal off my Suzuki rim on that side and when I use the KKE right side spacer I don't know if they're accounting for maybe some speedometer gear I don't have a mechanical speedometer on this thing so I, I'm not sure what used to be there but it really ha ended up with like my axle kind of sticking out on the left so I didn't use the KKE front right hand this was a slick spot here you got your tires wet and then you had to go over these roots anyway and it, it didn't end up using KKE's supplied spacer or bearing seal on the right hand front. I use my original stuff. I'm not saying the other spacer wouldn't have worked, I just didn't. The width of it doesn't really matter that much because it just kind of sets how far in your axle goes. The left hand spacer is what sets you to the disc rotor. So it has to be correct. 
the one on the left, but uh, right front is more about axle position. And I just liked how that looked a lot better stock, so I don't know if this is something else other guys have had on the KKE wheels. But I mean, the rest of everything else seemed like it was very good quality. Um, you know, spokes were tight, the wheels were true. Um, they gave you pretty good information, you know, bearing numbers and everything. So if you ever got to put new wheel bearings in there, you have all the information you need to do it. Uh, zero troubles during this first race. So. I think they're going to be fine. I also went to a double rim lock in the back. Because I've had a lot of trouble with slippage there. And um, I'm still running tubes, so it does kind of matter. Starting to, starting to, uh, valve stems starting to kind of turn over. I didn't really inspect the bike that closely afterwards, but it didn't look like I was had much movement after this first race. Still want to get caught up with that KX450. more minutes here. I think I might have mentioned in my videos before I've started doing keto. I got to figure out how I transition to kind of some race carbs when I'm doing keto. Um, I feel like I nailed it about two races ago. I felt great. Last race I felt less great. This race I did okay during the race. Like I didn't feel that bad but Man, I struggled after the race. Like, I didn't... Like, I was completely out of fuel. And it's weird, because I think... I actually did too many carbs. Kind of before and during. Um, I think I need to back that off. I think my body's getting used to... You know, burning fat. And not burning carbs. And so... It could have screwed with my blood sugar and everything, so I got to figure that out. The good thing about keto is I've lost some weight, and I have not adjusted my suspension. So I was—I got to thinking about that more this morning. I've lost enough weight that I might need to do some adjustments, you know, on compression or even sag make up for it and that might have been why my front end didn't feel quite as planted as what I was used to because I was riding a little bit higher. I had Morgans in Louisville kind of freshen up my forks before this race. They performed flawlessly. We went with the higher dollar seals in there. I think they're orange and tape. Does that sound right? The ones that are green. Green and orange. No leakage. I also went with these kind of seal saver socks on the forks instead of uh, the gators. I think it'd be easier to keep the fork tubes clean that way and the seals better protected all that seemed to be like good moves. They did well. So here we curl up, or up around this house, which was like at the beginning of the race last year. Across this grass field, and then there's going to be bikes coming up from the left. That's where the Pro Hill guys came. I did try that on lap four, and it didn't go well for me, so I went right back down and did the bypass. So... In the end, I did five laps and ended up in fourth place. Good start to the season. See you guys at round two.